Hello and welcome to this show me tutorial on basic brain anatomy looking at life from a sagittal section. Okay, so here's a wonderful sagittal view of the brain and let's start with some really basic labelling. So we have anterior here, we have posterior here. Why do we know it's posterior? Because we've got the cerebellum just here. We also have superior up here and inferior down here. Then next we have the hard to miss brain stem which is divided into three parts. We have most superiorly we have our midbrain. Then in the middle we have our great big fat pons and then most inferiorly just here we have our medulla oblongata. Around this, round here in this region, we have our temporal lobe. We also have our frontal lobe, which is divided at this point here. So anything anterior to this point, which is called our central sulcus, and I'll come back to that in a second. So anything anterior to the central sulcus is going to be our frontal lobe. Then posteriorly to our central sulcus, we have our parietal lobe, which would be this region here. The parietal lobe is divided here at the parieto-occipital sulcus into our occipital lobe, which is at the back just here. You'll also see we have another sulcus that's rather obvious, and it's this sulcus here, and this is our calcarine sulcus. Our calcarine sulcus is only visible from a medial view, so you need a sagittal slice to see it. So you can't see it from a lateral view. And the calcarine sulcus is important because it's around the region here, just about here, that we have our primary visual cortex. And our primary visual cortex is where we process all the information that we see from our eyes. And although it's not massively obvious, you can actually see from this view the optic nerve. And it's just here. This is our optic nerve, just in here, coming out there. So you imagine the eye, so we follow it through, the eye would be down here somewhere, and information is coming from our eye through our optic nerve, and then we have um, a crossing over of medial fibres, and we have a, some different tracks that go on that you'll learn about when you cover the visual pathways. And then it all ends up, basically, coming through this way and ending up at our primary visual cortex, which is situated in our occipital lobe. Therefore, if someone has damage to their occipital lobe, you can see how they might have a problem with their vision. So what else do we have? We have this bit here. So this is posteriorly to the pons, but anteriorly to our cerebellum we have our fourth ventricle. Now our fourth ventricle is a region where we have CSF sitting. Now CSF circulates throughout the brain and it, and it drains in certain places and we have our lateral ventricles, our third ventricle and our fourth ventricle and our fourth ventricle is this triangle shape that I've just coloured in and the fourth ventricle eventually drains by two lateral ventricles and then by another singular um, uh, medial um, channel um, down into our um, spinal cord. So uh, the fourth ventricle drains by two little channels that, that form into one big channel and then goes down into the spinal cord, but that'll be covered at another stage. I don't want to overcomplicate things too early. But what I want you to note about the fourth ventricle is to try and link it with something else. Now you might have heard of the fourth ventricle before and you might have heard of it in the context of the area postrema. So I'm going to write that down here. So the area postrema. Now the area postrema is situated at the floor of the fourth ventricle. Now the reason that the area postrema is important is it because it's at the site of something called the chemoreceptor trigger zone or the CTZ. And the CTZ will become very important when you learn about uh, antiemetic drugs. So when Tony Sampson is giving you a lecture on the CTZ, I want you to think back to area postrema, 
being at the floor of the fourth ventricle and you won't forget where the floor of the fourth ventricle is because you'll remember it's that little triangle that sits in front of the cerebellum. Okay, clearing the drawing just to make things a little bit simpler. I'm going to draw your attention to the central sulcus that I said I would draw your attention to before. Now how do I know this is the central sulcus? Well I know it's a central sulcus because I'm looking for this bad boy around it. So this bad boy around here, this is our paracentral lobule. Sorry, oh it's going off the screen. Paracentral... Sorry my, my little stylus is playing up. Ah, there you go. Paracentral lobule. So the paracentral lobule is something you see on a medial view. And the paracentral lobule is important when we think about the upside down half humunculus. And I'll show you that in just a second. But what I want to draw your attention to is that anteriorly to the central sulcus, so our pre-central gyrus, which I shall now colour in green, this strip here, this is our primary motor cortex which is part of our frontal lobe and then posteriorly in our paracentral lobule to the central sulcus which I shall colour in orange is our post central gyrus which is our primary sensory cortex. So we have both motor in green and sensory in orange regions that are represented by the brain on a medial view and this region is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery and you can actually see the anterior cerebral artery here and it continues round in this fashion we often say that it follows the cingulate gyrus and I'll show you the cingulate gyrus in blue here so this is the cingulate gyrus so this cingulate gyrus here so the course of the anterior cerebral artery is to follow the cingulate gyrus and the anterior cerebral artery supplies oxygen blood to the paracentral lobule and therefore if we have damage so a stroke in form of a hemorrhagic stroke or a uh, ischemic stroke so we have damage to our ACA or anterior cerebral artery we can therefore damage our paracentral lobule but what does that actually mean for a patient well, here's our upside down half humunculus, and we're looking, so on the previous image, we're looking at the screen like this, so our eyes would be looking forwards like that. And this section here would be our paracentral lobule. And this is cortotropically representing our lower limb, which means if we have damage to our anterior cerebral artery, we are potentially damaging the lower limb from both a motor and a sensory point of view. So people that have an ACA stroke, an anterior cerebral artery stroke, quite often present with motor weakness and sensory deficit of the lower limb, and that is why. So other structures to note just while we're here. This bit here is our corpus callosum. So the corpus callosum is a white matter tract that joins the left and right hemispheres together so it allows for communication between the left and right hemispheres which is very useful and then in between just in here we have what's known as our septum pellucidum and our septum pellucidum separates our left and right ventricles there are a couple of other things to note just while I'm here we have something called our thalamus just sitting in here now the thalamus you'll hear lots about, you'll probably learn to love it or maybe you'll learn to hate it. The thalamus is like a relay station, it's very important for sensory pathways, motor pathways, control of movement, it's, it's kind of like the go-to guy in the brain and most pathways will involve the thalamus at some point so it, it's worth getting an idea of what it does but importantly it's, it's really key that you're able to identify it so that is the thalamus. And then we can also see the hypothalamus just down here. Now the hypothalamus is important because it's very close to where we see crossing over of the optic tracts. So this is known as our optic chiasm. So as I pointed out this being the optic nerve, we actually get crossing over near this point. So if we have a tumour of the hypothalamus, 
which is often seen in things like acromegaly, so an adenoma of the hypothalamus. It can be so big that it can actually impinge on the crossing over of the fibres, um, of the medial fibres, and you can end up with a bitemporal hemianopia. But we, that will be covered at another time. I think that's probably enough for today. I don't want to bombard you with too much information. But I just want to draw your attention to this. This looks like there's some weird character, like one of these weird Japanese like soft toy characters, in this person's brain. It looks a bit like, I'm going to draw it in large, I just want to see if it's just me. It looks like this. It's a kind of funny face on a chicken body. Um, anyway, it did kind of amuse me. Um, but yeah, so that's enough for today. Um, hopefully you've learned something and watch out for some more videos. Thank you very much. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.